That is absolutely my favorite. My chicken, I, I chicken Alfredo, anything, but pasta. I love the Alfredo, but give me a uh, fettuccine noodle and give me Alfredo sauce and give me some chicken in my pasta. And I'm like in heaven. Anybody else? Favorite pasta? Favorite pasta? Ah, Rebecca said baked ziti. Yes. Now, do you like your baked ziti with ground beef, Rebecca? Because I know some people just do it um, with different kind of meats. So do you do yours with uh, ground beef typically? No, not typically. Okay. Just tomato sauce and lots of cheese. Okay. All right. Sweet. All right, so welcome everybody. It is one o'clock on the dot. We welcome you to live from the Chef Apprentice with our two amazing chefs. We have Chef Tom and Chef Steve. And today's episode is everything pasta. So I don't know about you, but I personally am a fan of pasta. You would have heard me say earlier, I love chicken Alfredo. Um, that is my all time favorite. And so I hope the chef has something Alfredo on the menu today, but if not, I'm still taking notes. So I will now turn it over to the chefs. Thank you all for being here. We're excited about today's episode, Everything Pasta. Over to you, chefs. Should be another container of cheese. Might be in there. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Welcome to Live from the Chef's Apprentice. My name's Chef Tom Long. Stepping away with Chef Steve Gump. And uh, we are excited today. We have several pasta dishes for you today uh, some traditional some non-traditional and uh we're excited to show you what we got so thank you cool. so if uh, you guys can zoom in on our product display up here we have a great it department and these guys are really dedicated and they make us look good awesome a little bit closer beautiful Okay, so today, obviously, we have different kinds of pastas. You know, pasta is a generic word, uh, but we have two, a couple different types of tube pasta, one being the elbow macaroni, another one being rigatoni tube pasta. So when it's extruded, it comes out of a tube extruder. This is farfalle, which is also called bow tie. Capellini, which is a very... Uh, just a little bit bigger than an angel hair. A couple different brands of fettuccine. We have gluten-free pasta, which is now a thing. So we're actually going to do a dish today with some gluten-free pasta. Some of the things that uh, may go into pasta, different types of tomatoes. Sun-dried tomatoes in oil, sun-dried tomatoes that have seasoning, sun-dried tomatoes that are julienne cut. Uh, we also have crushed tomatoes. Diced tomatoes, sorry about that, Steve. Diced tomatoes. And then one of the traditional um, baked, lasagna, or baked pastas is baked lasagna. And we're gonna do something special with that today. And of course, all of these, you need a good olive oil if you're gonna do anything that's non-cream based um, for your oil to, to move your pasta around it. And then we have some vodka, yeah, because we're gonna make vodka sauce today. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get some pasta rolling just because we're going to, uh, it's going to, we're going to try to cook the order as much as we can today. So you want to make sure your pasta water is at a rapid boil. I'm only going to do uh, eight ounces, but this is traditional um, fettuccine. I salted yeah. the water a little bit. Do not put oil in your pasta water, but you do want to salt it. For one pound of pasta, you need roughly four to five quarts of water because uh, you need to have enough room for it to move around. Even if you're doing a little less than a pound, you still want to have enough, especially if you have a longer pasta, that you want to be able to get that noodle down in there. Okay, so Chef Tom, you just totally, oh, and Mike just put the same question in the chat. You totally have probably messed me up and quite a few people with the exception of Patty. Uh, <laughs> Chef Patty, why no oil in your pasta? I was always taught that you put oil in the, in the water because then it helps the pasta not stick together. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's what why they, no oil? That's what they say. And it may do that. But the thing is, is when you cook pasta, especially what we're doing today, the pasta is going to go directly from the pot into the pan. So if you're cooking pasta ahead and you're going to shock it and cool it down, you may want to add a little bit of oil to the water. But today we're going to go straight salt water. And this, this pasta water, uh, when we're done cooking the pasta, we're going to save some of the water. And it's actually like a miracle ingredient in some of your dishes because um, it actually helps if, you're, if your sauce is too thin or too thick. This, this starch water actually helps bring all that together. So and any kind of reading you do, don't, because what happens is uh, that's the pasta cooks, it becomes starchy. And that's what helps to keep the sauce sticking to your pasta. So if you put oil on it, it doesn't do that. Mm. Yeah, Mike, you and I are on the same page. I see your question, because that's what I was taught too, that with, with pasta, you put oil in the pot to avoid it from sticking. Now, how do you determine um, how many boxes of pasta do you need for a serving of like 10 people? Is there a way to figure out measure wise how much pasta per like how much does one box of pasta do dish wise? Is it two dishes? Well, it's going to depend on your serving size. So it depends on what you're serving size, what you're serving your pasta with. If you're serving your pasta with a salad or another side, you don't need a huge serving. So I would say a pound of pasta should feed two to four. It's okay. Going to, it's going to depend on who's eating it. So I, I know at my house, we would do a one pound box of thin spaghetti. And uh, we were family four and it worked. And we each had even had a little bit of leftovers. So, so. the other thing you, um, you don't wanna do is once the pasta is drained, you don't wanna rinse the pasta, okay? Because you're gonna be rinsing the starch off of the pasta. The only reason you would rinse the pasta is if you're cooling it down, because rinsing it does cool it down, it shocks it so that you can you serve it for the next day. It's a very traditional thing in most restaurants where they cook today for tomorrow because it's a time saver. But if you're making this, so I, we kind of tailored this show to what you can do at home or what you should do at home. So you're not probably not gonna cook your pasta ahead. So, but good questions. All right. So we're gonna get that fired up. So, I think it was you, Cindy, who asked for chicken Alfredo. So I did a little bit of research on Alfredo sauce. And it's very interesting. The actual traditional Alfredo sauce has no cream. I know everybody's going to say, oh, no, that can't be true. But that's what the traditional sauce is. The American version of Alfredo sauce has cream. So and it's what we've all grown up and been used to. So I want to do a little bit of both. Um, if I have enough pasta, so we'll get that pasta cooking. So and as soon as our pasta is ready, but I want to talk about some of the ingredients here for Alfredo. It's really important to have the right kind of cheese. I have back here a couple different versions of shredded cheese, parm cheese. This is a grated version. This is actually a mixture of grated parm and pecorino romano that I put together myself. It's high end. It's not, if it's, if you go down the grocery store aisle and you're buying your Parmesan cheese off the shelf in the center aisle, it's not a good product. Okay. And now the grocery stores have uh, good Parmesan, a Parmesan cheese, Romano cheese, and a cheese case, and it might come in a bag that kind of looks like this. It's already pre-graded, right? And this was about, this is a half a pound, and it was about $6, maybe $7. Mm -hmm. So it's high end. It's worth it. You want to make sure that you have the right cheese for the right product. So this uh, is a, excuse me? Okay, Chef Tom, quick question. Um, sorry, the questions are coming so early. I think there's an excitement. I think that's great. <laughs> So quick question, is, is there such a thing as overcooked pasta? How do you know for sure when, I mean, certainly you watch your, the noodles boil, but how do you know when it's time to drain it from the water? Is there a, a short indication? Yeah, you're gonna do an al dente test. 
So an yeah. al dente is to the bite. So it should be, have a little bit of undercookedness in the center, just a slight shade of white, not too much. Because by the time, the thing is the noodles mm. are thin or the pasta is thin. So if you start testing it about two or three minutes before you think it's gonna be done, until you get it out of there, until you get it drained, it continues to cook. And then when you're gonna put it in your sauce, it's gonna to continue to cook because you're gonna make your sauce and your sauce is gonna be hot. So that's the best way. So yeah, don't throw it up against the wall. <laughs> I'm sure somebody is gonna say that. You throw it up against the wall, if it sticks, it's ready. <laughs> So this is our fettuccine. It's still a little, you can see it's uh, still a little opaque in the center. So we're not quite ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start here with my Alfredo sauce. And Alfredo is usually a pan sauce. And nowadays, uh, fettuccine Alfredo has gone a hundred different directions because people are adding proteins to it. Like Cindy likes chicken Alfredo. They're adding blackened chicken to it. They're adding shrimp to it. They're adding all kinds of things to make it uh, a, a total meal. Um, but it's normally, um, traditionally it's the noodles and the sauce. And then if you wanna add the protein to it to make it the entree, you can. So a couple of the things we have. So we're gonna do a chicken and broccoli Alfredo today. So I have some heavy cream. I have some broccoli florets that I blanched off. So they're just partially cooked. You can see they're nice and bright green. Okay, that's the way you wanna see them. I have some chicken tenders that I actually uh, oven roasted. I seasoned them with some uh, granulated garlic, some salt and pepper and a little bit of olive oil. So that they're ready to go. I have them cooled down and I'm gonna cut them up. I'm gonna add them to the end. So that's not the kind of dish where you would start off with raw chicken. Okay, and then add your noodles because uh, it, your pan kind of needs to be clean for your Alfredo sauce. So we're going to get a little bit of butter going here. Thank you. Pasta is almost ready. You don't want you don't want your butter to brown. You want it to melt. Okay. So I'm going to heat up my chicken. I have it cut in nice uniform pieces. Again, it's already cooked. Now is the chicken also already seasoned? Yes, yep, I seasoned okay. it with uh, granulated garlic, salt and pepper. I'm gonna save some of my pasta water here. I'm gonna save one cup of my pasta water. So that's my reserve. If my pasta is, my sauce gets too thick. Okay, that's just about ready, so. Okay. okay. So Chef Steve's gonna drain our pasta. We're gonna bring that back up. I'm gonna keep this moving. I don't want my butter to brown. That changes the flavor. So if you have to, you take it off. Sweet, very good. Okay. We're gonna go directly into the into the pot, into our pan. So our fettuccine is about 90% cooked. So now we're gonna toss this. And we're gonna start off with some cream. So it's the cream and the butter. We're gonna get that hot. 
And once it gets hot, we're gonna add our cheese. And I'm gonna fold my broccoli in right at the end. And Chef Tom, just to confirm that it is heavy cream, correct? Yes, it's heavy cream. I've seen half and half used. Heavy cream's the better product because um, heavy cream can be cooked and reduced where half and half is not as forgiving. Okay. Gonna put a little bit of salt in there, even though I seasoned the pasta water, I just want a little bit of salt. Now, as this comes to a boil, we're gonna go in with our cheese blend. And kind of mix that all together. And then the heat will do the rest of the work. If it looks like it's a little too thin, it's okay. Because as it cooks down, the cheese is gonna make it a little bit thicker. The pasta is gonna to continue to cook in the sauce. So that's gonna to help to thicken it up. It's gonna absorb some of it. I'll bring that up to a boil. Would you like the bowl for your display? Hmm? Would you like the bowl for your display? Yes. What's your next pasta? Hmm? What's your next pasta? What is it? Mine Penne. Is the, yeah. Penne. All right, our sauce is starting to get a little thicker as it gets hot. We want to bring it up to a boil. And the nice thing about the heavy cream is, is it goes well, it reduces well. And there's always the thing of what's the right amount of pasta for the sauce and vice versa. If it's dry and starchy, you either have too much pasta or not enough sauce. All right, it's starting to come together. Chef Tom, I am seriously sitting here saying. You wish you were here, don't you? Right. No, I'm seriously sitting here saying, hmm, do I really want to take this half an hour drive up the highway for that pasta? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you might need to put that in a to-go container and meet me outside so we can do curbside. How soon food. can you be here, Cindy? All right. So that comes together real nice. So it's nice. The chicken's already cooked. So we want to make sure that, you know, that the chicken's cooked. We're ready to go. So by putting in the cooked chicken, the breast meat, it's not falling apart. It's not shredded. Ah, yes, almost. Sauce is getting creamy. All right, and you should be able to do that. Mix it together. Yep, it's just about ready. So now I'm no. going to float, float some broccoli in at the very end here, because I want to keep the broccoli nice and green and al dente. So now, Chef Tom, I noticed you didn't put any seasoning in with the the pasta. Is it because the chicken was already seasoned? Chicken was already seasoned. Yep, I did put some salt in there. Right, but I didn't see anything else, like any anything else added. And so you mean it's, like it's, garlic? Right, or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. didn't see anything yep. else. I seasoned the chicken very heavy with granulated garlic when I roasted it. So okay. as that heats up, it comes. Uh, there we go. We're coming together very nicely. So, okay. So I'm going to display this in a bowl. There we go. Make sure I get some chicken on top. Make sure I get some broccoli on top so your customers or your family can see it. Mm 
Well, that smells delicious. And then what I like to do at the very end, and you can use fresh ground, fresh ground pepper, a little fresh ground pepper on top, or you can use crushed red if that's your preference. So very simple, not, there's no sauce swimming in the bowl. It's all coated very correctly. It's a little bit of sauce left in the pan. We always make sure that we feed our staff at the end. So this will be perfect for that. That's enough actually for one very hungry person or two people to share. So. Chef Steve is now going to do a dish that we do in the restaurant called Pasta Fantastica. And it, he's going to do it with gluten-free penne. So he's going to talk a little bit about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to season the water just to get them started here. Again, you need salt in your water, no oil. And I'm going to get his pasta started. So. so gluten-free pasta is made with this pasta, this particular one. There's all different kinds of gluten-free pasta out there. This particular one is made with rice flour and corn flour. No wheat. It's a tube pasta, which is what penne is. Once you add your pasta to the boiling water, you want to make sure you give it a stir. Thank you, Chef Tom, for doing yep. that for me. All right, so one of the base sauces that we're going to use today for our pasta fantastica is pesto, and I'm going to show you how to make it. It's very, very easy. You need a food processor. You can also do it in a blender as well. One of the things that Chef Tom mentioned about the gluten-free pasta is the kind of flour that they use. You gotta be careful with it because it's not made with your traditional flour. So it breaks apart a lot easier. It's very, very delicate. So when you stir it, you don't wanna stir it rapidly, just stir it ever so slightly. And it's also going to cook up a little differently than your normal pasta would as well. All right, back to our pesto. I have some chopped up walnuts here. You could also use pine nuts as well. Uh, they turned out better if you toast the pine nuts, but we're, we use walnuts today instead to show you a little bit different of a way to do it. I got two cups of basil. That you pick off the stem, you just want the leaves. And you're going to start by pulsing the basil and the walnuts together. And you just pulse it because you're just starting to cut it up small. Next, we're going to add in our Parmesan cheese and garlic. Also, in terms of pesto, if you have a nut allergy, you could completely omit the pine nuts or the walnuts, and it would still turn out just as fine. And you're just going to pulse them together. And I have some olive oil here. What we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to create an emulsification with your sauce. So you're going to keep this on, and you're going to add in your oil slowly. There's a question in the chat. It says, does gluten-free pasta have a different texture or taste? Good question. Chef Tom, Chef Steve, did anybody hear me? Yes, the gluten-free pasta definitely does have a different texture because uh, it's made with different products. 
it's a little less forgiving for overcooking. So you have to just undercook it just a little bit. Uh, and it's not a pasta that holds well for the next day. Uh, so taste wise, it's made with rice flour and corn flour. So it might pick up that kind of flavor, uh, but yes, it is different. And then cook time is the same. So nothing changes with the cook time because of its consistency. Cook time for this is about 10 minutes. So, but we're probably gonna go till about eight minutes, eight or nine, because we're going to be cooking it in uh, like a broth sauce. So it's gonna to continue to cook. It's I one apologize, I couldn't hear your question over the food processor. Oh, no worries. I just wasn't sure. I wanted to make sure there wasn't something on my end. I gotcha. All right, so as you can see, once you pulse it all together, it creates a sauce. It becomes nice and emulsified. And we're gonna use that as the sauce for our pasta fantastica. And what I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna take a little bit of this pasta water out while my gluten-free pasta is cooking. And we're gonna use that in our, in our dish as well. We're gonna start with a little bit of olive oil, just to get your veggies going. Process coming along, not too much longer before we pull it out and throw it into our dish. Key is to the dish is to get your pan nice and hot with your olive oil. You can also use um, pure vegetable oil too if you would like, if you don't like the flavor of olive oil. We're gonna start with some onion. Get that going. And I started with some red onion. You could also do white onion as well. Did that get some color on that? Get some of the aromatics going. Next, I'm gonna throw in some matchstick carrots or some grated carrots. Get these going. I'm gonna throw in our diced tomatoes. You can also use sun-dried tomatoes for this as well. One of the biggest things with sun-dried tomatoes is that sometimes you gotta rehydrate them. And to rehydrate them, what you can do is put them in some hot water and they become easy to use again. Thank you, Seth. Mm -hmm. One of the last things I'm going to throw in for our veggies are our, our spinach. You don't want to throw your spinach in too soon because it'll become too wilted. You want to throw, it's one of the last ingredients you throw in before your pasta. Chef, Steve, a question for you without everything else that's in the pot, like normally when you just put spinach in a pot, how long should you just kind of toss it just so that you have um, a good texture where it's not dried out? Can you ask that again? I'm sorry. Yeah, so if you're just doing spinach by itself with a little bit of olive oil, yeah. how long should you really cook it so that it doesn't get hard? I would say I would cook it for a couple of minutes because it, it cooks down very, very quick. I would say no more than a minute or two. I oh, put this okay. in here. And it's already starting to cook down a lot. Yes, you want to you want to weld it. The idea is to weld it, 
and it's going to continue to cook because it's so delicate. Mm -hmm. We're about a minute away. I did the al dente test on our penne. Mm -hmm. We're about a minute away till this is ready. All right. So we're going to down. Chef Steve, we're going to save a little bit of pasta water. Yep. Which I have it right here already. You already have some? some? Yep, I got some ahead He's of me. way ahead of me. Okay, now this water, so we couldn't use the other water, even though we had a previous pasta going, because we had wheat pasta, then this is gluten-free. So you have to use the, 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 the pasta water that's specific to mm -hmm. what you're cooking. All right. All right, while Chef Tom drains that, I'm just going to stir this up a little bit more. And Chef Tom, another question is, can you remind us of what the pasta water does? What's the benefit of using it again? Can you say that one more time, Cindy? I'm sorry. I was asking um, Chef Tom, because he talked about the importance of using the pasta water. Could he reiterate why you want to save and reuse some of the pasta water? Because it is, what it is, it's, uh, it has starch in it. So if you're oh. too thin or too thick, you can use the pasta water to help pull it back together versus adding water or cream, like for the Alfredo. So it's specifically to go in your sauce. It, yes, you actually can put it in your sauce. That's what you want to save it for. If you're, because it, it's, it's, the, it has, it's seasoned water that has salt in it. Chef Steve's going to add a little bit of pesto to it now. And a little bit of pesto goes a long way. <laughs> right. So he's gonna need a little bit of liquid. So this all comes together and that's where his pasta water is gonna come in handy. And then, like I said, when you use gluten-free pasta, you wanna be very careful stirring it just because of the kind of flour that you use, that they use when making the pasta. Just gonna throw in a little bit more pesto. And then I'm throwing a little bit of salt and pepper too. Just to season it. And as you can see, that starch stuck to the pasta with the water and all the pesto. I'm gonna put it in the dish. Making sure all those veggies are all incorporated to your dish. And then I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of Parmesan. Yeah, All right, that looks great. I can smell the basil. Oh my. Another question in the chat for you guys. What type of olive oil are you using? Extra virgin. Yeah, you want a nice robust olive oil. It's worth the money. Keep the questions coming, guys. Good questions. Continue to drop them in the chat. Okay. So, Chef Steve, I actually started my bow tie. Okay. So, if you can keep an eye on it. Sure, again. Save me some water. 
bring you. Up. I'll bring you up. So. Okay. But it's about two or three minutes away. Okay. Just so we keep things rolling, I actually cooked, started to cook the next pasta back here in the back, so that um, we're not waiting for the pasta to do to keep our dishes going because we have a couple more things to do. So I'm going to heat my pan up. You always heat your pan up first before you add your fat. Okay, so we got a little bit of olive oil going on there. The next dish I'm going to do is a non-traditional dish, but it's very seasonal. It's a bow tie pasta with smoked sausage, roasted butternut squash, and spinach. Very bright, colorful. So I took some butternut squash, and you can buy this uh, in the grocery store. A lot of the grocery stores have it already peeled and ready to go. Toss it in some olive oil, salt, pepper, and fresh leaf thyme, and then some julienne red onions. And I roasted that for about 20 minutes, okay, just to get it going. And then right after I was done with my fettuccine Alfredo, I put my smoked sausage on top of that, put that back in the oven to get that to release the oils and flavors. So that's gonna be the basis for our dish. Now I also wanna have some spinach to go along with it. So this is going to be a dish that's kind of brothy from the pasta water, plus the olive oil, and I'm gonna add just a splash of white wine to it. So I'm gonna heat my oil up. And I wanna take my, my sausage and my squash, I'm gonna get this started. Oh boy, does that ever smell good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I'm gonna get that moving. And what's nice about this dish is if you have the pasta ready, you can save your leftover roasted squash and sausage. And if you have leftover pasta, you can build it the next day very easily. So a little bit of olive oil, gonna get that moving. I'm going to add some leaf spinach and the same thing that Chef Steve had said. All I want to do is I want to put it in here and I want to wilt it. It's not going to take long. Okay, we'll get that going. When that spinach starts to crackle, you know it's about ready. How's my pasta, Chef? About to come up right now. Okay. So Chef Steve's gonna bring my bow tie up here. He's got a little bit of the reserve water. You like it right in your dish? Not all of it, but most of okay. it. Okay. So I'm just going to go in there. Pasta's al dente. You can kind of tell by looking at it. It's not real opaque white. There's still a little shade of yellow. I'm going to put, put that together just like that. And part of my sauce is a little bit of white wine. That adds a whole other dimension of flavor to it. I'm gonna put a little bit of coarse ground black pepper in here and some kosher salt. Now, as my pasta starts to get hot, I need just a little more liquid and this is where our water comes in, okay? And I want that just to cook for a minute so we get all the flavors blended together. And this is very similar to a dish we did in a restaurant called Bowtie Stir Fry. You go in there, huh? <laughs> yeah. So. How about this? All right. 
We're good. Clean up my area a little bit here. I don't want to stir it too much. I want to keep the squash from breaking up. So I want to keep that nice and colorful. It's got all kinds of aromatics going on here. You can smell the smoke from the sausage. The white wine. And our last item is going to be some shredded parmesan so there's a difference in grated and shredded shredded is going to be exactly what it says it's going to look sort of like this this does well for garnish because it shows up just a little bit better you can also see the amount of cheese that you're putting on it and i'm going to do a Fresh parsley garnish too. Very light and brothy. I'm gonna move these, spread this out, mm -hmm. put the black in the middle. Like that. So easy, light dish. Not all sauces have to be heavy and oily. It's okay to have. Uh, some oil and some broth. If you don't want to use, if you kind of got it in your head and you said, I don't like the idea of using the pasta water. You could use vegetable stock or beef stock um, or chicken stock, depending on whatever item you're working with. So that works very well also. All right, we're going to clean up our area. We got two more dishes and then a surprise. So the next dish we're gonna make is a pasta sauce. I'll get you going here, Steph. What's that? I'm gonna get your pasta going here. Sounds good. This is two rigatoni. One of my favorite pastas. Okay, I'm gonna get our pan going here. I pity the guys are going to have to clean this up. I know, right? <laughs> it's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes back here. Oh, <laughs> there's pasta everywhere. Absolutely. First, we're going to start out with three tablespoons of butter. Get that melt. Jess, we got a question for you. Um, yes. Are any of these dishes in your cookbook? I don't believe so yet, right, Chef Tom? No. Well, that sounds like there'll Second be a part edition. two, ladies and gentlemen. There'll be a part two coming to the bookstore near you. Part two coming because if these dishes are not in Chef Tom and Chef Steve, there is a request <laughs> to add them. So, that so sounds, noted. Sounds like a plan. Excellent right. question. So I got my butter nice and hot. I started with some onions and garlic to get going. I'm gonna get some color on them. them Chef Steve, is that just one onion diced up? Yep, that is it has a medium-sized onion diced up. That is correct. Get some nice color going. And you want to cook them till they're all translucent. You don't want to get too much color on them but you want to cook them so they're nice and translucent. Now the rigatoni will take a little bit longer just because it's a little bit bigger of a pasta. 
but we're not going to quite cook this one all the way to El Dante yet. Like we did all the other ones. All right, our onions are nice and translucent. Gonna add some tomato paste. The great thing about tomato paste is it's a, it's a thickener. So this is gonna be one of the things that's gonna thicken our sauce as well as using some of our pasta water as well. All right. So this, this sauce is gonna come out looking like a pink sauce because we're gonna add some heavy cream to it as well. So now that we got all this incorporated with the tomato paste and you wanna get that nice tomato smell before you add your tomatoes. Now these are just diced canned tomatoes right out of a can. You can get right in the grocery store. Now this is gonna make it look very, very like, very thick. Cause that's what that tomato paste does. And then we're gonna add our heavy cream to it. Thank you, sir. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it got nice, it got very, very thick with all the, the tomatoes and the tomato paste. Now we're gonna add in our heavy cream. And this is where you get that pink sauce. All right. Another way you could also make pink sauce, like earlier, Chef Tom made Alfredo. You could make a little bit of tomato sauce and throw that in there to get uh, what some call it's a pasta primavera, which is similar to what we're making, except we're just adding some vodka to it. Chef, T Chef Steve and Chef Tom, you guys have an offer for somebody to come and help clean up the kitchen but only and only if they can sample everything that's there. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so the next thing is our sauce is kind of thick here with all of our ingredients. You're gonna need to throw it in a food processor or a blender. I got a food processor over here to my right. So I'm gonna throw it in there so we can blend it up. And when you mix all this, you want to be careful, even in the food processor, because it's a hot content. You want to make sure you have a nice lid. Nice lid. On top of it. And if it has a hole on it, put like a towel on top. And you could pulse it. You get it going. All right. We're going to add this mixture back into our pan. At my previous job, we made a dish called it was um, it was a vodka sauce, but we made it with prosciutto. And it was very, very good. Ran all the ingredients through a uh, meat grinder to grind that all up nice and fine. It was one of our best selling dishes at my previous job. All right, we're gonna get this going again. 
this is probably about four or five minutes away. Okay, sounds good. So rigatoni, because it's a little bit of a heavier wall pasta and it's a tube pasta, it takes a little longer to cook. This is probably a 10 to 12 minute. So that's why I put a lid on it to kind of increase the heat so we can move it along. Chef Tom, we noticed that you mentioned rigatoni was your favorite pasta. Why is that? I think it's an, I like it because uh, I like, uh, I like meat sauce or bouillonnaise meat sauce and rigatoni goes very well with that. It's a spoon pasta. It's a little easier to eat. It's, it's uh, versatile for um, casseroles. It's versatile where you could take like meat sauce and rigatoni and put it into a dish and put some mozzarella and provolone on top. Um, it just you can do a lot of different things with it. For spaghetti is a little harder to eat. It's not as graceful. I just right. think it presents well. As, ah. chef, as Chef Tom started to explain that, I just going to wrap through my vodka for the sauce. You don't want to throw it in ahead of time because you want to cook it out. So with returning the sauce back to the pan, you're cooking, uh, you're cooking all of the alcohol out of your pasta or out of your sauce. And nowadays they have all kinds of different flavored vodkas. So you could go in nine, nine different directions with this sauce if you wanted to put a jalapeno vodka in or a basil vodka. Do they make a basil vodka? I don't know if they make a basil they vodka. They should. They make a hot pepper vodka. You could do that too. It would give it a little bit of spice. All right. I know personally at home I use um, the Bertoli uh, vodka sauce that you get at the grocery store. It's probably about one of the best ones that I've I personally bought really? from the grocery store. Yes, if you walk through the pasta aisle, it's amazing how many different jarred sauces they have nowadays uh, versus what they had 20 years ago. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and you have to credit like chefs or a lot of the reason that happened is because they've created a lot of these things either for the company itself or the company went somewhere and had the sauce and said, we gotta, we gotta come up with one of those. One of the keys to the sauce is when it gets to this point, I don't know if you saw me pull it off the heat a little bit because all the heat is getting throughout the sauce and it starts to, it starts to spit at you. So you wanna constantly keep it stirring so that it doesn't spit as much to you. I think our pasta is just about there. Yep. Another three minutes. This right. takes a little longer, but the next one only takes a couple minutes. So, I'm really looking forward to the last surprise. I don't know Where about you? you, Chef. I think I am. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to give this two minutes. It's also okay while your pasta is cooking. You can also turn your heat or your heat all the way down because your sauce is already hot. All righty. Coming behind you. Mm-hmm. While he gets that together. And with our sauce being already hot, we're going to throw it right in our dish. And I also have a little bit of pasta water here because what will happen is whenever you throw your pasta in, it, it might make it too thick. And I know there's starch in the water, but it'll also thin out your sauce a little bit as well. You do this, you just want to fold ever so slightly because your pan's only so big and you can make a mess and go out the sides of your pan. And it's not always the easiest thing to clean up afterwards. So it got a little thick, so I'm gonna throw a little bit of my pasta water in. Just a, just a hair, not much. All right, and now I'm gonna add 
Parmesan and fold that in. One of the best things about rigatoni is with the ridges, all those ridges is get sauce all down throughout it. Same thing with like a penne, it does the same exact thing. There's so many different kinds of pasta out there that have ridges in it that are really well with sauces. Turn that up a little bit. It's good. Sure does. Get a spoon. All right. I'm just going to dust the top with a little bit of cheese of our cheese mixture. Looks great. Amazing. Mm. I don't know which one I want. I don't know. There's all kinds of different good ones today. Well, everybody already claimed which one they wanted in the chat. So Chef Thomas, Chef Steve, you guys actually don't get any. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's fair. <laughs> give us a minute to reset here. Yeah, no, you guys. Now we're going to do a classical dish that a lot of places don't do anymore. And it's a great dish. I bet I know what it is. Okay. You want me to take a guess? Yes. Spaghetti and meatballs? Nope. No. Uh, shrimp scampi. Oh, shrimp scampi. Now, Chef Tom, which one is your absolute favorite dish? Is it the one with the rigatoni? No. I'm a meat, I'm a spaghetti and meat sauce guy. I love spaghetti. A good meat sauce that's made with like two thirds hot Italian sausage and one third ground beef, a little bit of onion and a nice uh, tomato basil sauce. I could eat that all day. Me too. I, I, I like the Italian sausage in my spaghetti. Chef Steve, what is your favorite? What was that question again? What's your favorite pasta dish? My favorite pasta dish, dish is chicken alfredo because I do it a couple different ways. I always throw a little bit of a different flair on it whenever I make it. Okay, so Chef Steve, you and I will need to talk offline so that you can Send some of those creative ideas. I, I, that works for me. That works for me. Okay. Just going to put a lid on this and get it going. The next pasta we're going to cook is capellini. Capellini is very, very, very thin spaghetti. Not quite as thin as angel hair, but darn close. Get that going to a boil. As soon as that comes up to a boil, I'm going to start the dish. Shrimp scampi is a garlic, lemon, butter sauce, white wine, pan sauce is really what it is. It's called a pan sauce because everything's made right in a pan. It's very light, um, no cream. Um, like I said, very simple, but you need to, we're almost ready. Uh, there's a couple steps to make it together and you can do, doesn't have to be shrimp. You could do shrimp and scallop scampi. You could do a seafood scampi, uh, however you want to do it, but you need to have something that holds together. You couldn't do like flounder or haddock. So it has to be solid mussels that you can saute. Okay. So we're going to salt our water here a little bit and get that going. So I need a little bit of olive oil. What I have here on my tray is freshly chopped garlic, some whole butter, some fresh chopped parsley, 
And these are smaller shrimp. I leave the tails on for presentation. You don't have to, because um, you, you can't eat them, but it does give you a nicer presentation. Um, and if you want to take them off, that's fine. All right. You know, a watch pot never boils. I know. That's I what know. they say. All right, well, we're going to do this. I'm going to put this together. I'm going to get my, get my saute pan hot before I add my... You gonna cook it back yeah, here? Yeah, I'll cook it back here. There you go. Thank you. So Steve's gonna cook my capellini in the back because it uh, we have bigger flame back there. So get my pan hot, a little bit of olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom. I'm gonna move it around. And I'm going to lay my shrimp in flat side down. You don't want to just throw them in there. Now, these have all been uh, peeled in the vein, so they're ready to go. And I know I'm touching these with my hands, but it's okay because I'm going to cook them. And they don't take very long to cook because they're very they're small. These are, I believe, a 36, 40 count. 21, 25 is perfect for this. And that's a size per pound. Just going to salt them just a little bit. Chef Tom, what was that that you sprinkled over the shrimp? Just a little bit of kosher salt. Oh, salt, okay. Yep. And like I said, keep your pan moving. They don't take long. So I'm gonna turn them over. You don't wanna overcook shrimp. Uh, it reduces the size of them and it makes them kind of rubbery. So you wanna make sure that you just cook them probably, especially this size, two minutes per side. Get a little bit of color on them if you can. How's our capellini? Yep. Put it in the pot already for you. All righty. A few minutes. Okay. You turn them over once. You might want to move them around. Make sure for this uh, this uh, cooking vehicle, the induction burner, it's hotter in the middle. I'm moving some of the ones that were on the outside in, into the middle. You want to have a little bit of color. You don't want them to look uh, boiled. You want them to look sauteed. Okay, I'm going to transfer these to a side vessel just to hold them. And I want just a touch more oil. And I'm gonna saute my garlic. Fresh garlic is better. I took these cloves and chopped them up. You wanna make sure that you Control your garlic, don't burn your garlic. So this stuff that they sell in the grocery store, the jarred, the jarred chopped garlic, it's okay. You know, it works in an instant. You can chop fresh, it's better. Okay. We're just gonna move that around. A little bit of white wine. A little bit more. This white wine reduces, and this is cooking wine. 
So I don't know if everybody knows the difference between cooking wine and what you may drink at home. If you don't, it's the sodium level. Cooking wine has to have a certain percentage of sodium in it to make a cooking wine. There you are, sir. All righty, beautiful. So now I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of lemon into this, into my pan sauce. So Tom, question for you. Could you have also thrown a little bit of lemon juice in versus squeezing fresh lemon? You can. Some of the lemon juice has sodium benzoate in it, has a preservative in it. If you can do fresh, it's better. And now I'm going to float some butter into here. Just a little bit at a time. And we're going to kind of pull this together. So it becomes like a lemony butter type of sauce. And I don't want it to, I don't want to put, you wouldn't put just like a big whole stick in there. You got to cut it up into pieces. So it all kind of melts at the same proximity. So you see what happens is it starts to become this uh, slightly emulsified sauce with the acid from the lemon and then the butter. So my pasta, What I want to do here is toss this to coat it. See, that comes together very quickly. I'm going to do the, that plate. Oh, okay. Just to put it together. I'm going to put a little parsley in it to get some parsley in the center. little black pepper. And my shrimp are gonna come back in, okay? And I just, if you see how I have the pan, I kind of have the shrimp on one side and the pasta on the other. Okay, now when I display this, I wanna display it a little differently than kind of uh, trying to place it on the plate. I had an Italian chef teach me this years ago. And basically, you want to twirl your pasta. So when you display it, it doesn't look like this big conjumbled mess. And then what you do is you slide it on that way. It's a much more uh, upscale finish than noodles in a bowl. Again, just twirling it. And you can do this for spaghetti too. It just doesn't have, it's usually a, a fettuccine, the noodle, the uh, longer noodle pastas, just like that. And we're gonna put some of our shrimp in the center here. Chef Tom, the only thing that is on your shrimp is just salt in terms of seasoning? Well, yes. So your, your shrimp, yes, it gets mixed in with the, all the, the butter sauce that was in the bottom of the pan when I tossed it in there. Mm -hmm. That's what coats it. Okay. So it should be a buttery type sauce. I'm going to just reserve this. Give me a container. Okay. I'm going to make just a little more sauce. Okay. 
Thank you. With my pasta water and some butter. I think there's some butter back there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to heat that up. And that's where, again, where your pasta water comes in. Just a little bit. I'm just going to float a little bit more butter in here. Heat that up because I want all that garlic mm. to go over top of my, yeah. Chef, that presentation is super, 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 it's, it's, it's super nice with the noodles, the way that they're wrapped. It makes it interesting, doesn't it? And it makes you saw it, it takes a minute. And it, and it also gives for a clean presentation. It just yes. it just looks neat. It looks clean. It looks um, it looks appetizing. It just it just really That's speaks to the it. dish. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I'm gonna put a little parsley here in my sauce at the end. Just let it cook down for just a second. Put that over top. You can see the chunks of garlic on there. We'll make sure our shrimp gets coated. And that's it. That's a classical shrimp scampi. They don't make, very few places make them anymore. They were a very big 1970s, 1980s type dish. There you go. That looks good. That does look very I know good. what I'm eating. I see that. <laughs> so our next and our last dish is a soup that we do here in the restaurant. And uh, Chef Steve does a great job with our soups. People love them. And this is a soup that's created from a baked pasta. So sometimes, you know, when you run a restaurant, uh, you may forecast, well, I think I'm gonna make three pans of stuffed shells and I may only sell two of them or two and a half of them. So you have, you have some product left. It's very edible, it's a leftover. You can try to sell it as a dinner, but a lot of times if you, you can build it into another product. So we're going to give you an example today of that. So, all right. So what we're going to make is a soup that like Chef Tom said in the restaurant, it's called tomato rustica. And a lot of people, they don't know what to do with their leftovers, like Chef Tom just said. So I'm going to show you how we turn our leftover casseroles, especially our lasagna into a soup. One of the first things we're gonna do, I have some lasagna here. And we're just gonna chop that up. I put some olive oil in our pot to get started. While I cut up this pasta. All you're gonna do is just invert it onto a cutting board. And then I'm just going to cut it in some chunks. Then we're going to save this for later. Put that back in our boat right here. While we're cutting that, our pan's getting nice and hot. And I'm going to start with some garlic, onions, and celery. Put them right in there. I'm going to cook them until they get translucent. And once again, you could also use a different kind of oil. Vegetable oil works great for this dish. One of the keys to your lasagna, a lot of people put cheese on top of the lasagna. So before you cut it, you want to take that layer of cheese off because it won't do anything for your soup. The ricotta cheese that's inside your lasagna will be fine. It'll, it'll all dissolve well in the soup. And you'll also have chunks of ricotta in it, which makes for a great, uh, which makes for a great soup from your lasagna. All right, next we're gonna throw in some diced tomatoes with the juice. Get 
get those working. And this soup's gonna be a thicker soup. It doesn't need to be real, um, real thin. That's what kind of makes it that, that more of a rustic look by having it a little thicker. And I'm gonna throw in, I have some crushed tomatoes here. I'm gonna throw them in. Get that going. Oh, this comes up to a boil or all but a boil. You could do this with all kinds of different casseroles. We've done it with uh, lasagna. We've done it with uh, stromboli soup that contains uh, like ham, sausage, uh, pepperoni. And we just cut it up just like so. We, I think we use, if I recall, I think we used penne for that when we did it. Yes. In the restaurant. And there really is an art to cooking this kind of, of dish to make it look like something else. I'm going to throw in some stock. And that's chicken stock? That is correct. That is chicken stock. I'm going to get this going. And how do you know how much stock to use? So roughly I use, I did, I prepared four quarts or yeah, four quarts, I'm sorry. And I'm just going to do two. Um, with the amount we have, two quarts would be more than enough. Mm -hmm. So usually in the restaurant, we have, I would say anywhere from like a half a, a big hotel pan left. And we would do for that much, we would, we would do um, a gallon of chicken stock. And the key, the key to the, the lasagna, what the reason why I said it's an art is because you want to add that in later because it was already cooked. If you throw it in too soon, it becomes too muddled and it'll break it down even more than it already is. So if you are cooking any casseroles later to make into a soup, you always want to add that in at a lot, uh, excuse me, at a later time. After your soup already comes up to a boil or anything to that nature. I'm gonna throw in some herbs. I created an herb mixture of thyme, oregano, and dried basil. Get those all in there. Also, the next great thing about your lasagna is it's also your thickener as well. Wait for this to come up to a boil. Any questions so far about the soup? Anything spike your interest at all? About something you have at home that might be able to be made into a soup? All right, it's not quite up to a boil yet, but I'm gonna throw in our lasagna. Get all that in there. All right, it's gonna take a few minutes to boil. One of my favorite things that I love doing since I started working here, Chef Tom helped me a lot with creating um, soups. Um, it's one of the areas that I was not the greatest in. And I have to say, that's one of my most favorite things to do. So I do thank you for that right. since, I, since I started working here. Thank you very it's much. The goal is to pass it down. That's what you're supposed to do. It's, pass it's, on your knowledge. It's one of the, the things that I, I, I love doing and I, I take great pride in doing it. And I wanna, I wanna thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. <clears throat> Does a good job. So one of the things I wanna just say about a, a soup like this where you're utilizing uh, a casserole. So it's a once and done thing. Because the casserole was already cooked, 
you build the base of the soup, you add the casserole to it, you serve it that day, and then you're done. It's not something that, uh, because you, it's a food safety risk of reheating and cooling things down uh, several times. So once something has been reheated the second time, uh, that's the limit of what you can do to serve it. So, but uh, our, we, we sell out of it. It's a great soup. Oh, it's one of, it's one yeah. of our most popular ones, yeah. I think. That we make. And it's unusual. Could you do this from scratch without having, uh, and all I did was get some uh, Stouffer's meat lasagna, a couple small packages of it. So you could do this that way where you wouldn't have to be a, a leftover, uh, so to speak. Uh, and that's what we did. And I think these were $2.50 for, for each one. But, um, but could you do this without, yeah, you could, you could take lasagna noodles and cook them and break them up and add all the ingredients to make it do the same way, but uh, the, the flavors aren't quite the same. Yep, I would have to agree. So I got you a ladle here, chef. Thank you, I'm waiting for it to come up to a boil. Yep. Let it get, let it get a little thicker. Yep. So it was a fun day. I know we went over a little bit of time. I apologize for that. We were probably a little too anxious about doing <laughs> pasta today. <laughs> No, uh, well, but, we certainly have enjoyed it. I think for me to date, this is probably my favorite, but it's because I love pasta. And so I will be experimenting and probably reaching out if things don't go quite as well as your presentation looks. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, and, yeah. and I think our next one is going to be November 12th. November 12th, correct. Uh, th there's a nice compliment. It says the quickest 90 minutes of the week. <laughs> well that that speaks volumes absolutely and don't forget um volume number two cookbook people are requesting that um if you guys can certainly throw in a pasta dish or two in in the cookbook to come in the near future would be appreciated absolutely we can do that so so, so chef steve's going to present his soup in just a second here um but so a lot of these things, what we tried to focus on today was uh, getting the pasta cooked uh, as you would if you were at home. Now, can you make your pasta ahead of time and shock it and cool it down? You can. You can do that kind of dish. Um, but this is kind of a from the water to the pan to the table type theory. So. And Kyle DeBrito has been so gracious. He just dropped the link in to the cookbook volume one. Um, and so if you have not already done so, please feel free to click on that and order it from the bookstore. Some of the same recipes that you have seen um, in the weeks prior have been and is listed in the cookbook. I mean, obviously we know that the pasta one is not, but it is an exception to the rule. They usually try to do something or two if they can during the semester that is in the cookbook. So again, if you have not purchased it, please do so. The link is in the chat. So thank you very much, everybody, for showing up. And we appreciate it. Beautiful. Um, will there be, will, uh, will the next show be about BLTs? Will the next show be about BLTs? I know who that is. <laughs> 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 it probably won't be. The next show is going to be about Native American cuisine. So right. taking place November 12th. We'll be back here at 1 p.m. And then we're also coming back November 19th at 1 p.m. for Thanksgiving with a twist. So again, those dates are November 12th uh, at 1 p.m. And that will be uh, Native American. And then uh, November 19th, 1 p.m., Thanksgiving with the twist. We'll certainly send out emails and so also Facebook. So thank you for being here. There's some thank you in the chat, chefs. Um, thank you all again for continuing to bring us quality and good food. We appreciate it. And Chef Tom, I'm serious about coming for that pasta and chicken Alfredo. You'll see me in a little bit. All okay. right, guys. Great. <laughs> Thanks, thank Chef you. Steve. See you guys. Yeah. Right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>